Wednesday, the Angels clinched the AL West Division title. Thursday, Frankie Rodriguez notched his 57th save, tying the major league record for saves in a season. Last night, Mike Napoli hit a ninth inning, two-run walk-off home run. The Angels' eighth walk-off win this season. It's been quite a week here in Anaheim. What will happen tonight? You'll have to stay tuned to find out. We are at the Big A for this Saturday night contest between the Angels and the Seattle Mariners. It's game three in a four game series. The Angels have won the first two. Happy to have you with us, everybody. Rory Marcus along with Mark Gubazad. The Angels won last night in dramatic fashion. Mike Napoli, a ninth inning home run, and that's one of the reasons the Angels have clinched so early and been so far ahead this year, Gooby. They can beat you in so many ways. Rory, they can, but it all starts with that pitching staff. It's been so good. Right now, they're third in the American League in ERA when their ERA is under 3-9. Their pitching staff, particularly the starters, give them a lot of innings. That back end of the bullpen's been fantastic. That's how you're able to win all these one or two run games when you got 55 wins out of that decided by one or two. But they even when they're behind, they can come back. 38 times they came back to win games. Eight of them, the walk-off variety. You saw what Mike Napoli did last night. So, so many different ways they can win. But it's that belief that they're never going to fall behind far enough where they can't come back. When they get their lead, it's over. Well, the offense and defense, both good enough. But really, for the Angels all year long, it's been the pitching. John Garland goes tonight. John Garland's last one was a good one. Very good, Rory. I thought he kept his fastball down very well. His changeup was good. His curveball, above all, he quickened up that pace. That's important for him. Don't be too slow and methodical on the mound. Go out and attack the batters, and he's been successful like he was against the Yankees. Prior to those 10 starts, ERA over six because he waited too long between pitches. He's got too good of stuff to ever doubt himself. Attack that zone, he'll be successful. Of course, when you're pitching well, it's a lot easier to work fast also. We'll see John Garland tonight going against the Seattle Mariners in the third game of this four-game series. It's the Angels and Mariners baseball coming up next. Back here at Angel Stadium, the Angels and the Mariners. Pleasant Saturday evening for baseball with the Angels taking the field now. Let's take a look at the Mariners batting order for tonight's game. Each hero, the leadoff hitter, he has 192 hits, followed by Jeremy Reed, Raul Abanez, and Adrian Beltre, then Lopez Betancourt. Tug Hewlett is the DH. Rob Johnson, the catcher, and Luis Valbuena will bat ninth. And John Garland on the hill for the Halos. 13 and 8 ERA at 4-5-2. It's his 30th start, as usual, giving a ton of starts, ton of innings. Getting close to that 200 mark. Got to work that fastball down, throw some fastballs inside, and change speeds and work quickly. Checking the Rico defense for the Angels tonight, the outfield. Willits, Hunter, and Rivera with Hunter back in the ball game now after missing three games. Mark Teixeira at first, the duo of Rodriguez and Wood up the middle. Hughes playing third again, and Mike Napoli behind the plate, catching John Garland. Tory Hunter's back in there, Gooby. Got the smile going. The quad feeling much better. The suspension over. Talking to Angel Hernandez. He's probably asking about his ability to swim on the floor in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> Tori talks to everybody, <laughs> even the umpires. <laughs> There's John Garland. Garland is uh, 13 and 8, 4.52. The last one was a very good outing against the New York Yankees. 13 wins this year. Amazing. The guy every year double figures, gives you 200 plus innings. Very durable. Twice he won 18 games in a season. Remember that World Series champion White Sox club, too. So he's got valuable postseason experience. Each hero leads off for the Mariners. And lines the first pitch into right field. So it didn't take long for each hero to collect his 193rd hit of the season. First pitch, he's on board. Nice. 
And that'll bring up Jeremy Reed. Reed hitting 274. Doesn't have much power, two home runs, 25 runs batted in. Each hero at first base with nobody out. Just the beginning of the ball game, John Garland working for the Angels. Strike one to Reed. He threw it with a lot of speed, too, at first base, 41 stolen bases. But John Garland, very good at slowing down the running game. Holds the ball, quick to the plate. Each hero back in there, 41 stolen bases for the Mariners' leadoff man. Seattle leads the American League in batting average since the All-Star break. They're hitting 288 as a team. Reed hits a chopper to the right side. Only one play for Rodriguez as each hero takes second base. One out in the first inning and Raul Ibanez coming up. I think one of the things lost in Seattle's poor season has been how good this guy's been. A amazing. That batting average at 312, but it's the RBIs at 106. He's got 43 doubles, three triples to go along with those 23 home runs. Unbelievably, that's 69 extra base hits for Raul Ibanez. Ibanez, as he steps in there, has reached base safely 30 consecutive games. There's ball one. That's via a hit, a walk, or a hit by pitch. And that's a career high for him. And also the longest active streak in the American League right now. One ball, one strike. Ibanez has done well against John Garland. Like most Angel pitchers, he's had success, but 370, that's a lot of at-bats, too. 54 at-bats, 20 hits, two of them home runs. There's a shot through the right side. That's each hero running, and they're going to hold him at third as the ball is gunned in by Juan Rivera. Probably a good move by Sam Perlazzo. That ball got out to Juan quickly, and Juan does have a very good arm. So each hero, even as fast as he is, had to hold up. He's got a strong arm and an accurate arm, too, and does a good job of charging the baseball. Another perfect swing by Ibanez. Hits that ball middle in through the hole very easy but Juan Rivera charges it very aggressively and makes that strong throw in. Still you got a chance at a double play ball by that strong arm by Juan Rivera to get out of this inning without any run scored. And Adrian Beltre at the plate. Beltre hitting 270. He has 25 home runs, 76 runs batted in. Garland starts him with a strike on the inside corner. One and one, Beltre a few years removed from the incredible year he had with the Dodgers. That was 2004 when he hit 334 in his final year playing in Los Angeles. 
48 home runs, 121 runs batted in. The next year he hit almost 80 points lower with the Mariners. And fouls that one off his foot. Well, that got him pretty good. That was a good run at fastball inside. Belcher hit that right off his leg. Going inside. That got him in the shin area. Mm. Well, just below the kneecap. Gets him right in that spot there, right by the knee. I hate to say this, but now in this position, if you get a ground ball, if it's at somebody, you got a perfect situation to get a double play. That had to hurt. His numbers were very, very impressive that year with the Dodgers, but he really hasn't come close since then to having that kind of an offensive year. He's been a good third baseman. But they didn't get what those numbers were telling him they might get. Beltre fouls that one away. But then again, 22 different players have started at third base for the Dodgers in the four years that Beltre has been gone. That's 48 home runs and 200 hits. A batting average and power. Yeah, he could have been an MVP. Is that good? Speaking of MVPs, Ichiro with third, Banyes over at first. One and two to Adrian Beltre. Hopped up right side. It's coming back foul and out of play. In 2005, one year after that great year with the Dodgers, with the Mariners, he struck out a career high 108 times. The best uh, batting average he's had with Seattle was 276. Last year, he's at 270 right now. One ball, two strikes to Adrian Beltre. Runners on the corners, one out in the first inning. Two and two. Tonight, this is the 14th of 19 games between these two teams this year. Two and two to Beltre. Beltre against Garland in his career, six for 17. That's a 353 batting average. Plus, right now, Beltre has a 15 game hitting streak going. You what? He's still un uncomfortable at the plate, and John Garland continues to throw that sinking fastball down and in. A lot of foul balls. Still doesn't look like he's comfortable. Got they're fouling that ball right around the knee area. And he chops another one foul. He played on a bum ankle in Los Angeles in 2004 and had that incredible year. This next pitch will be the ninth pitch of this at bat to Ian Beltre. Good battle between Beltre and Garland with one out in the top of the first inning. And he fouled it off of himself again. He's beating himself up in there. Might not make it through the first inning. I don't know if that feels good either. That's unbelievable where he fouled that ball off again. He got himself oh. on the thigh. Yeah. And Garland certainly has a good run in fastball today. Here in Beltre doesn't want to see you too many more pitches. Another foul ball. That one hard hit. And this has been a very long at bat. We've seen 10 pitches.
Two balls, two strikes to Adrian Beltre. And he hits a fly ball into right field. So after all of that, he'll get a sack fly. Each hero coming to the plate. Rivera's throw cut off, one to nothing Mariners. But Beltre did a good job. He did the job. He got the run in. You talk about a great at bat. Beltre, what, what he really wanted to do was get a ball up and hit it in the air. It was in a pitch on the outside part of the plate. He could barely get down the line. Gets a ground ball. That's an easy double play. But he did his job hitting the ball up in the air and got a sacrifice fly out of it. Two outs in the first inning. Jose Lopez coming up. Lopez hitting 292. Ibanez still at first base. And Lopez takes ball one. Beltre is still pretty sore over there. Twice he fouled the ball off his left leg. That first one he fouled it off real hard off the knee area too. Just it's the side of that and then right up in the thigh area too. That's it's unbelievable. Two balls and no strikes now to Jose Lopez. Rick Griffin, their trainer, might use that whole can of that free spread. <laughs> you have to at least be able to feel your legs move to play <laughs> third base, though, don't you? You would think so. <laughs> Two and one to Lopez. After the first couple nights, the umpire got hit with two foul tips. Jojima got hit by a couple. Now Beltre fouls two off his, off his own leg. And now it's three and one. There's Eric Cooper. He took one right on the collarbone and one right around the throat. The first game of this series when he was behind the plate. Jojima's not playing tonight. The count three and one to Jose Lopez. Full count now three and two. Jojima, the Mariners catcher, has had a tough series so far. So they're playing Rob Johnson tonight. There he is, just watching. Well, Ryan Rowland Smith's got a line drive off his shin area and then a line drive up the middle of the Saunders, too. There's been a lot of contact with that baseball. And Garland walks Lopez. First and second with two outs. Betancourt coming up. Betancourt hitting 273, six homers. 43 runs batted in. The Mariners feels like they've been batting a long time, but they've scored just one run. But there's a line drive into left field that might get him another one. Coming to the plate is Ibanez. The throw in is not going to be in time. And it's a base hit. RBI for Betancourt. Two to nothing, Seattle. So a couple of long at bats and then a couple of hitters each hero and Betancourt who both got hits on the first pitch. Pitch on the outside part of the plate. The breaking pitch was the guy a decent part of that play but Betancourt did a good job of getting down in that baseball and hitting hard in the left field. Mike Butcher has gone out already to talk to John Garland. Who has thrown 24 pitches in this first inning. And we'll face the designated hitter, Tug Hewlett, next. So an early visit from Butcher. Garland's given up two runs, three hits, and one walk. Hewlett. 
Hewlett DHing for the Mariners tonight. Good breaking ball, strike one. Lopez at second, Bentoncourt at first. Hit hard, but Teixeira is there and goes to the bag for the out. The Mariners get a couple of runs. And after half an inning, they lead John Garland and the Angels two to nothing. The Mariners scored a couple of runs in the top of the first inning. The Angels coming to bat now for the first time. Let's take a look at their lineup. Mike Napoli had the big hit last night, the walk-off home run. The first walk-off home run of his entire life. <laughs> Figgins is DHing. Tonight, and he's on the top of the order. Then Reggie Willits, Teixeira, Hunter, Rivera, Quinlan, and the bottom two are Brandon Wood and Sean Rodriguez. Going against <laughs> Ryan Fearbin. He's got a fastball, 86 to 89, not overpowering. We'll try to hit spots. He's got a curveball and a changeup. So laughing about Napoli, the first in his entire <laughs> life. Little League, T ball, never had he done that. He must have gave up that information. He was willing to do so. <laughs> John Figgins takes the first pitch from Ryan Fearbin inside. Fearbin's another one of their young guys. He's just turned 23 about three weeks ago. Figgy back in that lineup after the sore elbow kept him out for a few days. But not in the field. He's DHing. Which means that uh, Vladdy Guerrero is not playing tonight. And Vlad wanted to be in there too. They're going to give him a couple days off tomorrow and with the off day, scheduled off day on Monday. Three and one to Figgins. Fairbin is one and two this year. He went one and six with Seattle last year with an earned run average over eight in 13 appearances. Full count to Sean Figgins. Fearman 0 and 2 in his career versus the Angels with an ERA over 8 there at 837. Popped up by Figgins. Betancourt, the shortstop, goes out and puts it away. The Mariners defense, Adrian Beltre, a gold glove winner last season for the first time, could win another one this year. He's in the infield with Betancourt, Balbuena, and Lopez. Raul Abanez is the anchor in left. Jeremy Reed and Ichiro in the outfield with Rob Johnson catching tonight. Beltre gets, comes in on a ball in the infield grass as good as anybody the game has ever seen. One of the best at negating a bunning attack against them. Bare hands it, strong, strong arm. 0-1 to Reggie Willits getting a chance to play left field tonight. Reggie hits it hard but foul. No balls, two strikes. To left field, Ibanez makes the play. Two up, two down in the Angels' first inning. Boy, asleep already. Just the first inning, but he'll be awake and revived. I bet you for later on in the ball game. Oh, that's perfect, though. <laughs> Any chance of a big league game? Checking out the AL West champions. Teixeira takes one down low, ball one. Two balls and no strikes to Mark Teixeira. Hitting 352 as an angel.
Now three and one. Torrey Hunter is batting cleanup tonight. He's on deck. Certainly a good fastball count for, for Tex to get that 200th career home run. Instead, he gets a walk. A two out walk to Teixeira. And Torrey Hunter coming up. Torrey is hitting three or hitting a 281. 20 homers, 73 runs batted in. Torrey takes ball one. Oh, he had him. Teixeira gets picked off of first base. Fearman gets him. And the Angels are gone in the first inning. It's two to nothing, Seattle. Fearban with a pretty good pickoff. It's Mark the share. That was pretty close to a balk. Montana pitcher is able to bring his leg up high. You cross that pitching rubber, you have to go home. So he was right on the edge, and it got the share leaning towards second. Second inning now. Rob Johnson leads off for the Mariners. And hits the first pitch right back to Garland. One pitch, one out. Take a look at that pickoff. Right there you get the right foot on the rubber there. I mean, that's the thing is, when you bring that leg up so close to the pitching rubber, that's what got Tex. I mean, he's thinking that line. And once you cross the pitching rubber, you have to go home. He's right on the edge. Just looking at Daryl Cousins, who's up in first base, if you get a little help on that one. If you can get away with that, it's a pretty good way to stop a running game because you're right in the middle. The base runner doesn't know either you're going home or over to first. Luis Valbuena at the plate for the Mariners and he hits one hard but foul down the first baseline. No balls two strikes to Valbuena. He's one for 11 with the Mariners this season. Batting ninth and playing second base tonight. That was fouled back and Caught by a guy looked like he was using his sweater. Good catch. The stance, Took the yeah. sting out of his hands. Used the sweater to make the play. 0 oh and 2 to Valbuena. Take a look at this. It looks like a sweater. Yeah, right there, the sweater. Yeah, nice play. Reggie Willits makes the catch on that one in foul territory. Two outs in the second inning, and that'll bring on each hero. Another good crowd here Saturday night. There's plenty of football on television tonight, but uh, a big crowd has turned out for this Angel Mariner game. They're one wearing red, too. Tremendous crowd. Is it break out the Red Week or are they just doing it on their own? On their own, they're wearing a lot of them AL West champion 2008 shirts. Uh, uh, you're right. Now the Corona timeout on Ichiro. First Japanese position player over here. He hit 300, 14 straight years. Seven here, seven over there. And then there's a museum. If you ever over there, you can go uh, check it out. I will do that. Up the middle, slowly hit. Nice play by Rodriguez, and he got him with a scoop from Tex at first base. The Mariners go out in order in the second. This is a nice angle on this ball taken by Rodriguez. Then the good scoop by Mark Teixeira. Two to nothing, Mariners. As we get back here to Angel Stadium, Torrey Hunter hits one through the left side for a base hit, leading off the second inning. 
There's a lot of first pitch swinging in this ball game. Fastball counts, going up there hacking. Good swing by Torres, first at bat. In over three games. And the first hit for the Angels tonight. And that's the exact spot that Torreon loves that fastball. Middle up, and he crushed that ball through the hole for a base hit. Juan Rivera steps in. Juan hitting 231 with 11 home runs. 42 runs batted in. Torrey Hunter, a good lead in first base. And Juan hits one into left center field. That sends Jeremy Reed to the wall. Juan Juan Rivera ties the game with a two-run shot in the second inning. What a great swing by Juan Rivera. It is 12th home run. Give that lineup such balance. Good power from the right side. Jaguar replay. They try to go back-to-back -back fastballs in the inside part of the plate. Juan says, you should have tried it. Hit that one out. Almost a dead center over the Vegas sign here at the ballpark. Jeremy Reed trying to go up. Couldn't bring it back. Angels two, Mariners two. After that shot by Rivera. Quinlan pops one foul. Rob Quinlan batting. No balls, two strikes. But Juan Rivera now has a dozen home runs. And he really didn't start playing until July. Quinlan a half swing. He strikes out. The first strikeout tonight for Ryan Fearbin. Get back to Wander Bear, how good he's been since given the opportunity to play. This went about his business when he wasn't getting much playing time. Early batting practice, spent every chance he, he could. Kept quiet for Mike Sosha. When Mike Sosha gave him that opportunity, this whole club took off. You're talking about balance throughout. Here is Mike Napoli. He hit the big two run home run last night. Only his was in the bottom of the ninth with two outs to win the game. And the bat he had before the home run, too, when he hit the sacrifice fly to center on a tough pitch behind an account, shortened up a swing, did his job. 16 home runs on the year now for Napoli. He's driven in 38 runs. One and two. On the ground behind third, that's a fair ball. Beltre's throw is not handled by Lopez. That should have been an out. And Jose Lopez playing his first career game at first base. So not accustomed to seeing that throw come over, did not make the play. That was a great play, too, by Beltre. About as far away as you can be. Threw it three quarters across the diamond. Lopez has flat out missed it. Jaguar replay, you can't get much better than Adrian Beltre at third base. Still confident enough in the strength of his arm to make that throw, and Lopez has flat missed it at first base. So the Angels have a base runner with one out. That's an error on Lopez. Brandon Wood, the batter. Beltre's made some great plays in this series already. No balls, two strikes to Brandon Wood. See him reach out for it. He's stretching with his foot almost in the middle part of the base, too. It's not an easy position to play. Everyone just thinks you can just put anybody at first base, but it's a whole different atmosphere at first base is prayer. We saw when Howie Kendrick moved over from second base to first base. It's a different thing because everyone's throws a little bit different coming across the diamond. It's, it's a tough position to play. Yeah. 
Wood hits a fly ball into center field. Ichiro and Reed coming together in the center fielder. Reed takes it. Two outs. That'll bring on Sean Rodriguez. John Rodriguez trying to get up over that 200 mark. He's at 195 right now. He's hit a couple of home runs. Driven in five runs. He's made some very nice plays. That one's low to Sean. One ball, no strikes to Sean Rodriguez. One and one on the check swing. Sean looking down at Dino Ebel before he gets back in that box. There goes Napoli. They had him picked off. Now they're going to get him in a rundown, and Betancourt outraces him back to first base. Fearman gets his second pickoff of the night. Although that'll go as a caught stealing on Napoli. But a home run by Juan Rivera ties the game, and after two, it's 2 2. <music> FSN West presents Angels Baseball, brought to you by your Southern California Toyota dealer. Get your MPG at your Southern California Toyota dealer today. Back here at the Big A, it's a 2-2 tie as we go to the third inning. Jeremy Reed leads off for the Mariners. And hits a fly ball foul on the left field side. Reed grounded out to second base his first time up. Another Long Beach State guy, Jeremy Reed. One ball, one strike. He also graduated from Bonita High School. And he grounds that one to Sean Rodriguez. One out in the third inning. Fans, the Angels are champions of the American League West Division and have clinched a spot in the postseason for the fourth time in five years. So come on out and celebrate on Rally Monday here at Angel Stadium on September 29th. It's a free event for all fans and includes a wide variety of entertainment for the whole family, including Angels alum Tim Salmon. He'll be here. For more information on Rally Monday, visit angelsbaseball.com. It was a lot of fun last year. A lot of fans come out for that. Get ready for the postseason. First pitch to Ibanez, low and outside, ball one. Can we count on you, Rory, to be there? I don't know how much is the admission price. <laughs> it's for free. It's free? Yes. I'll be here. One ball, one strike to Ibanez. We're in the third inning. The ball game's tied up at two. On the ground, fair ball as Teixeira fields it. Two down. We've seen Garland have his troubles in the first inning before and then settle in. So far, that's what's happening here. He's now retired six in a row. Key for John Garland is getting those ground balls. He's got six ground ball outs already here in the third inning with two outs. Adrian Beltre up there. Beltre had a sack fly his first time up. Beltre tired of waiting on Garland, backs out. And he hits a short fly ball into center field. Hunter coming in, and that'll be the inning. 
The Mariners go out in order in the third, and after two and a half, it's a 2 2 tie. Back here at the Big A, where the Angels and Mariners are tied up at two. Sean Rodriguez leading the inning off. Good breaking ball by Fearbin. Rodriguez hitting 195. He's hit a couple of home runs. And he fouls that pitch away. Made some great defensive plays, too. And right now, you got to think of the lines that Sean Rodriguez may be part of the postseason roster. So she'll probably take 10 pitchers and 15 position players on that roster for that first round. So there is still some questions to be answered before that roster is made up. Including the, the rotation for the playoffs. Starting rotation. Eric Ibar ran very well today going first to third. So he's real close to playing again. Two balls, two strikes. And down goes Rodriguez swinging. One out. This week, Fox NFL Sunday returns as Eli Manning and the Giants take on Steven Jackson and the Rams, or the 49ers battle the Seahawks in an early showdown between division rivals. Coverage begins with the Ford Drive One Fox NFL Sunday pregame show at 9 a.m. Check local listings for the game and start time in your area. Michael Strahan on there now. Good, good. Glad Thanks for your it. reaction yeah. there, Rory. Yeah, it's great. Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, Jimmy Johnson, it's good hair. <laughs> Sean Figgins popped out to shortstop his first time up. That one is backhanded by Lopez, who gets it to Fairbin, and he just beats Figgins to the bag. So Lopez a good play that time. Good range by Lopez playing like he's a second baseman diving for that ball. Good flip. What would a fear be able to get Sean Figgins by a half a step. Two down and Reggie Willits at the plate. Willits calls time he could see a beach ball come down out there and Center field. Reggie Willits flied out to left field his first time up. Reggie has not had the opportunities. He still has less than 100 at bats. He has 81 at bats, 13 hits. And he's certainly a guy, too. You, Mike Sosh is looking for is possible in that 25 man roster for the postseason. Do so many things, could steal base, play a lot of outfield positions for you. Play him well. Uh, just for the reason you stated, I'd be very surprised if he wasn't on the postseason roster. One ball, one strike to Reggie. I think because of the injuries, particularly up in the middle part of their defense, the second and short, you're going to see an extra position player as compared to an extra pitcher. Two and one. Yeah, I think so. With uh, Kendrick and Ibar, even if they come back and look good, it, you're still a little worried in the back of your mind. There's Howie Kendrick. Oh, he's getting close also. He's beginning to move pretty well, but Ibar's ahead of the schedule as far as getting ready, close for game ready. You know, also, you got Vladimir Guerrero, has got that knee irritation right now, so you're going to need some extra position players more so than you will an extra guy down in your bullpen. Two balls, two strikes to Reggie Willits. Well, especially in the first series, which is a little bit shorter. The Angels don't know who they're going to play, of course. Earlier today, Tampa Bay beat the Yankees and Toronto beat Boston, but that was the first game of a doubleheader in both cases. In the second game, Boston's ahead of Toronto, six to five in the eighth inning. And the Yankees are ahead of Tampa Bay five to four in the eighth. So they could both split. And if they do, the lead would remain at two for Tampa Bay. 
Well, it looked for a while that Tampa was going to pick up two games. Boston was behind that second game against Toronto, five to two late. But they've come back, and Tampa Bay was ahead four to one, but they now trail it five to four. Minnesota's playing Baltimore, and Minnesota is well on their way to a sweep. They won the first game. They're winning the second game, ten to two, in the third inning. Baltimore is beginning to fall apart. Willits takes a call, third strike, and the Angels are gone in order in the third inning. We played three. It's a 2-2 tie. Fourth inning at the Big A, the Mariners and the Angels tied up at two. Jose Lopez leads off for the Mariners here in the fourth inning against John Garland, who has now retired seven straight. Since giving up an RBI single to Betancourt that made it 2 0 Mariners. Juan Rivera's two run homer tied it. That's where we are right now. Yeah. Fouled into the Angel dugout. One and one to Jose Lopez. He plays, played his first game at first base today, but he's played 482 at sec. He's played some shortstop and third. Jose Lopez, Venezuelan, 24 years old. They have a lot of young players on this team right now. One ball, two strikes. about the National League races a little bit. The Dodgers lead the Rockies five to one in the sixth. And Arizona's trailing at home against Cincinnati one to nothing. That one's in the fifth inning. Well, the Dodgers seem to make they're ready to trying to run away with that division now. Let's hit down to third. Rob Quinlan fields it cleanly and gets him. Now the app flag trivia Aflac. question for tonight. The earliest any team ever clinched a division was September 7th. Can you name the team and year? Well, Seattle won 116 games a few years ago. That was in 01, I believe. In 98, the Yankees won 114. Betancourt fouls the first pitch back. Betancourt drove in a run with a base hit his first time up. And it's now 0-2 to the Mariners shortstop. He had a good August. He hit 305 in August. No balls, two strikes to Betancourt. And it's two and two. Earlier today, the Mets lost and the Phillies won. So that put the Phillies at two games behind the Mets. There's strike three call to Bedcourt outside corner gets him. Two down. Kids join the Angels for Salute to Kids Day at Angel Stadium tomorrow afternoon. All kids ages 2 to 18 in attendance will be eligible to win great prizes such as autographed Angels merchandise, Anaheim Ducks tickets, Aquarium of the Pacific Passes, California Pizza Kitchen and Ruby's gift certificates, iPod shuffles, and a whole lot more. $3 tickets are available in select seating areas for this ballgame. Use the password THANKS at angelsbaseball.com or the Angel Stadium ticket window. Jim Riggleman not too happy about that called third strike on Betancourt. Pretty sure you're not allowed to argue balls and strikes. It's an automatic ejection when you do that. So. Marty Foster, the home plate umpire tonight. 
Okay. They're only going fast on the outside corner. Looked pretty good to me. Good spot. Too good to take it. Two outs. Hewlett at the plate. Tug Hewlett for Seattle. Takes strike one. He hit his first major league home run a couple of weeks ago at Cleveland. He's gone six for 27 with Seattle. One ball, one strike. Garland ready. He comes back 1-1. One, one. Hewlett is DHing tonight. Batting seventh for the Mariners. That might be one that Ruggleman might not like too much when he sees it again. You know, it's certainly borderline high out of the strike zone. Shaking his head, Jim, Jim Riggleman. It's been a tough year for Seattle. You have a record like that, you don't get a lot of breaks, it seems to be. Two balls, two strikes to Hewlett. Riggleman took over midseason. And most people around the Mariners feel he's done a pretty good job. Good baseball man, knows the game very well. Pretty good record since he's taken over 32 and 42. Certainly he's got the offense going, particularly in the second half. Full count now, three and two to Hewlett. This will be pitch number 60 for Garland in the ball game. He's gotten away pretty easy in the last two innings, nine in the second, eight in the third. But he walks Hewlett, so this inning's going to be a little bit longer. Two outs in the fourth inning. Rob Johnson coming up. Yeah, pitching coaches don't like when a pitcher walks a batter with two outs, nobody on. A lot of times you'll see that happen because pitchers relax just a little bit. The focus goes away. Before you know it, you're behind an account, then you end up walking a guy. <laughs> 0 1 to Johnson. He was the PCL catcher of the year at Tacoma this year. Certainly is convenient for Seattle to have their triple-A team in Tacoma. And get them there quickly. One ball, one strike to Rob Johnson. The Angels have won five of their last six games. And right now they're a season high. 33 games over 500. Last night was win number 90 for the Angels against 57 losses. Against the Mariners, the last 21 times they've played the Mariners here, the Angels have gone 16 and 5. Amazing though, know, when you think about it, there's still, after today, 14 more games for the Angels to play, and they've already locked up this division. Still playing for the best record though. Strike two to Johnson. Tomorrow, a very good matchup. It's Irvin Santana and Felix Hernandez at 1235. Santana 15 and 6. Hernandez 9 and 10. But the ERA, ERAs are almost identical. And Felix Hernandez, a very good young pitcher. So is Irvin. Two of the best young right handers you're going to see in baseball. Tomorrow at 1235. Two and two to Rob Johnson. Two outs here on the top of the fourth inning. The Mariners with a base runner. Two balls, two strikes, two out. A two-two tie.
Garland delivers 2 2 and he missed outside with that one. So he's given up a two out walk and now he's gone to a full count to Johnson. Three and two. Up the middle, it's right at Sean Rodriguez on one hop, and that'll do it. We've played three and a half. It's still a 2-2 tie. It's a 2-2 tie as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. And the Angels will have Mark Teixeira, Torrey Hunter, and Juan Rivera in this fourth inning. Here's the Aflac trivia answer. What was the earliest any team clinched a division? It was September 7th. Who was the team and what was the year? Affleck! Well, it was your 1975 Cincinnati Reds who clinched on September, well, the Angels clinched on September 10th, but it was the Reds who uh, did it in 1975. Big Red Machine. That was the year of that great World Series against the Red Sox. Yeah. Carlton Fisk. People Game remember. Six. Fisk. Winning game six, but the Reds won game seven. Teixeira hits a ground ball to third, and Beltre retires him. One out. Boy, what about a team they had, too, the Reds? Torrey Hunter coming up now. The Land Rover legendary performance, the Angels. Fifth straight winning year now. It's a club record. And for the fifth time in the last seven, They've won 90 plus games and they're in the playoffs again. Very consistent and highly thought of organization now. Yeah, when you think what they're doing did in the minor leagues this year too where almost every one of their teams made the postseason. So now you get a great team at the major league level but you have real good prospects throughout your whole minor league system from rookie ball all the way up to triple A. It's three and oh to Torrey Hunter. Torrey singled and scored in the second inning. He came home and Rivera homered behind him. Swinging 3-0. He just missed hitting one right down the line. A foul ball. Three balls, one strike. Another base hit for Hunter. Fearman got another pitch up in the zone, and Torrey turns it into a double. He's two for two tonight. This is 36 double. So no ill effects of getting those three days off. Coupled by suspension. Now Howard's replay, another pitch, it was elevated. Torrey Hunter loves that baseball up in the strike zone. Hits it hard. It's a one out double. Juan Rivera up there now. Juan hit a home run last time up. A two run shot. He hit it with Homer with uh, Hunter on base. He hits this one very well to straightaway center and it's over Reed's head. This time it one hops the wall and it's an RBI double. Juan Rivera has driven in all three runs, and the Angels take the lead. Boy, Juan has hit the ball right on the button now twice. Crushed that, and Torrey Hunter scoring. He came out of the game the other day with that quad problem, running around there. He's had to do a lot of running so far. They scored a couple times on a home run by Juan Rivera here on a double. Picks it up. Good secondary lead goes around there. Looks like he's running pretty well. But still, that's something Mike Sosa wants to keep an eye on, along with the num number of other players as we get closer to the playoffs. He wants to make sure that's completely healthy, that 25-man roster, if he can. Rob Quinlan at the plate now. See Ned Berger, the trainer there in the background, kind of watching Torrey pull up and sit on the bench. Each hero makes the catch in right field to retire Quinlan. Torrey talking to Teixeira. 
Two pretty good acquisitions right there. Nice job by Tony Regan, the GM, to be able to bring in not only a great defender at center field, just a tremendous personality in Torrey Hunter, and then you bring in another gold glover to play first with all that power, switch hitter. Three, four, five hitters for that Angel team can match up with anybody's in baseball, particularly any you're going to see in the postseason. Mike Napoli at the plate. Ground ball in the hole at shortstop. Betancourt gets to it. His long throw is there for the out. But the Angels get another run. Juan Rivera's driven in all of their runs tonight. Three to two at the end of four. They're having fun at the ballpark tonight watching the Angels. <laughs> the Angels lead the Mariners three to two. Rally <laughs> Muck even. Torrey Hunter has scored twice already tonight. Juan Rivera has driven in all three runs tonight, including a two-run home run. He's crushed the ball twice. Luis Valbuena chops one to the right side, and Garland has an unassisted putout. Fans, the first ever Fiesta Angels will take place on Saturday, September 27th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. in the Angel Stadium parking lot. This free event presented by Bank of America, State Farm Insurance, and ESPN Deportes includes music, rides, food, and some of your Angel players and coaches. Admission is free and tickets can be purchased or picked up on September 27th at the event entrance. Fiesta Angels. Oh, can't wait. Can't wait to another hang out with you there, Rory. Another, another free event. event. Another event for us to go to together, Gooby. <laughs> Each hero at the plate. One ball and one strike. I know I got my siesta bowl today. I'm excited. Siesta bowl? Siesta. Siesta bowl. Sorry, my bad. How about a salsa bowl? Salsa bowl. Yeah. But you siesta can take a salsa siesta ball. right after you've eaten the salsa. <laughs> Each year up there, two balls and one strike. <laughs> you kind of mix salsa and fiesta, I think. It's all the same. Well, it's all the know. same to me. <laughs> Each year fouls one off, two balls and two strikes. Each year singled and scored in the first inning. Two balls, two strikes, one out here in the fifth inning. It's three to two Angels. There's a shot into right center field. The way each hero runs, he's already thinking triple. Torrey Hunter goes to get it. Each hero not hesitating, and they won't make a throw. He goes in standing up. A one out triple for each hero puts the tying run 90 feet away. His second hit of the night is 194 hit of the season. Boy, so quick, too. And they're shading him over to left center field. Such a quick bat. Hits that ball right in the right center right away, thick and triple. Never hesitated. Took a little peek up to see where Torrey Hunter was able to get that baseball. This glides in for a triple. He's going to be his second triple of the year, though. Surprising. The Angels pull the infield in with Jeremy Reed at the plate. Throw to third base. Each hero diving back in there. Napoli sending that one down to Quinlan. Now he'll go out and talk to Garland for a moment. Garland had a tough first inning. Kind of struggled through the fourth inning, although he didn't give up any runs. And he has a chance to get a win now if he can get through five. He's already up to 73 pitches. But the Mariners threatening. There's the pitch count. It's not an easy position for John Garland. He's more of a ground ball pitcher with the infield in. Now what you would say a strikeout guy, and that's the, what you want right now is a strikeout. He's behind on Reed, 2-0. Oh. 
Reed hitting 279. I don't know what that was. There was a PA announcement of some kind that seemed to come out of nowhere. Caused Reed to back out for a second. Two and one. Quite a scramble for that one. She never left her seat and she came up with it. The lady in red. Two and one to Jeremy Reed. Two balls, two strikes. Now an opportunity for John Garland to get that strikeout now even up the count of 2-2. Two, two. He has some options which kind of pitch he's going to throw. Napoli wants a high fastball on the inside part of the plate. Still two and two. That was a good pitch too by John Garland jammed him. Now he's got some options again. He went that fastball inside. Reed thinking in the lines he's going to come back inside. Napoli wants to throw him a changeup. Gives him the sign to get it down by the dirt area. Which he does, but it's ball three. Full count to Reed. Ibanez is on deck. Three balls, two strikes. Garland stays with the stretch and walks Reed. That puts runners at first and third. That's the third walk given up by John Garland tonight. Still only one out, and Ibanez stepping in. Instant there, Napoli was thinking in the lines of fastball back inside and then fastball away, but John Garland shook him off twice to go to the changeup. See if he get Reed to swing at that pitch out of his zone. It's a tough call there to throw that changeup, especially when you get a Ibanez coming up who hits the Angels and John Garland so well. He loves hitting in this stadium, 362 career batting average here. Ibanez one for two tonight. One and oh. The Mariners have Ichiro at third, Jeremy Reed at first. And one out here in the top of the fifth inning, trying to tie it or take the lead. Well, Banyas has hit into 13 double plays, and that's what John Garland's looking for right now. But he's behind two and oh. Two balls, no strikes to Raul Ibanez. Garland in a jam. And he swings and hits it to Teixeira, who comes home. They have each year on a rundown. Napoli runs into third. There's nobody at the plate. Ichiro didn't know that, and Garland gets back in time to cover. They get him at home. Well, that was close. The Angels almost blew it with Quinlan running Ichiro back to third and nobody at home plate. But, but Garland realized it and recovered. Teixeira made an outstanding play. Good reaction coming up and throwing that baseball home, too, and gets off the base, dies full extension. Makes the throw over to home plate. Mike Dalby runs him back, which you're supposed to do. Rob Quinlan, the same thing. And John Garland heads up play coming back. To be able to back up home plate. He had to cover first and then ran all the way back to home plate. Outstanding defense by the Angels there. And Mike Butcher going out to John Garland for two reasons. One, they discuss how the game plan is to get out Adrian Beltre, but also to give him a breather. Covering first and then back to cover home. Each hero stayed in the rundown long enough to let the runners move up to second and third. 
Here you see John Garland, always the right thing to do to go to first base side, gets out of the way to throw, and then goes to home to be in position to catch the ball and apply the tag. That's textbook. You worked on that in spring training. It's worked with perfectly by John Garland. If he doesn't do it, Gooby, there's nobody there, and he sure will waltz his home. Exactly. Tell you what, that's not an easy play for a pitcher to be involved in that, but Garland was outstanding. Second and third, two outs. Adrian Beltre up there. And the first pitch to Beltre is inside, ball one. Adrian had a sack fly on a long at bat in the first inning and flied out again his second time up. Two on, two out. One and one to Beltre. Inside again, two and one. He seems to be keeping an in on Beltre. Reed at third, Ibanez at second. Beltre will probably step out here as Napoli goes out to talk to Garland again. It looked like Garland was really trying to keep the ball in on Beltre's hands, Scooby. And that's what he was successful in early that first at bat. And then he one pitch away and hit the ball well to right field for the sacrifice fly. Which he does love to get his arms as most power hitters do get their arms extended. So that you have a better chance of getting them out if you throw that fastball in, but it's still a dangerous pitch when you go inside. You got to make sure you get it on the corner or in off the plate. Fouled away and Napoli gets hit. Boy, that area has been so dangerous in this series. We've seen both catchers get hit. We've seen umpires take shots. Ned Berger and Mike Sosha coming out to make sure Napoli's all right. It's just been one of those series where players are getting hit where the protection isn't. Mike Sosha knows a little bit about that. So many games caught. So many foul tips hit Mike Sosha here. Mike Napoli, same thing. It's in that same center, general area that Jojima got hit, just the opposite side. If Joe got hit last night, Mike, Mike Napoli, the same spot, just around the neck area, just above where the, the text is not quite as padded around the neck and the end of that chest protector. Two balls, two strikes to Beltre. Hard hit, but right at Brandon Wood. And Garland gets out of the jam. We're halfway through this one. It's three to two, Angels. Into the bottom of the fifth inning we go. The Angels come to bat. Brandon Wood leading off. Ryan Fearbin delivers to him, and Brandon takes outside. 0 for 1 tonight. Good pitch by Fearbin there for a strike. One and one the count. There's a drive hit foul by Wood, strike two. The way the game is going so far, we might see a Francisco Rodriguez appearance tonight. The next save will break the all-time record. It's a one-run game now here in the bottom of the fifth. Swing and a miss by Wood at a high fastball. One down. Sean Rodriguez will be the batter. 
Rodriguez struck out his first time up. Blowing outside to Sean. found a couple of booths over and it's one ball and one strike. Two and one to the Angel second baseman. Rodriguez has taken advantage of his playing time and there's a base hit for him. Into left field, his first hit of the night, number five for the Angels. What a swing for Sean Rodriguez there, too. Staying back, good balance. Lower half of his body was strong. Go hit that ball through the hole in a Howard's replay. Staying back, keeping that. The key for hitting is keeping that chin on that back shoulder. If you do that, it means your, your hips aren't flying open, your head's not flying open. You're able to stay back with good balance. Figgins up there with one out and one on. Fearman goes to first, and that was close. He's already picked off a couple tonight. He got to share in the first and nailed the wood in the second. Does have a great move and very close. Got Napoli in the second, rather, when Wood was batting. There's a pitch up high. Fredo Griffin's going over to talk to Sean Rodriguez between each pitch to make sure he's aware of that move. Now, Fredo was a very good base dealer himself. Tough one when you're a, a base runner against a guy that's borderline between a balk and not a balk. Figgins hits one pretty well into left field. Ibanez backs up, still backpedaling. He makes the catch just shy of the warning track. So Figgy's 0 for 3 in his return to the lineup so far. Two outs. Reggie Willits will be the batter. Reggie's fly to left and struck out tonight. Reggie Willits was on the disabled list, activated on August 27th. He had a brief rehab stint at Rancho Cucamonga. But Reggie right now is old for his last 12. One and oh the count. Snap throw to first, diving back in there, Rodriguez. Johnson gunning it down. We got a strong throw like that from Johnson and a great pickoff move. By Fearbin, it's a difficult task to be able to get that extra base here, stealing it. 2 0 oh to Reggie Willits. In the American League East tonight, the Red Sox and the Rays both split doubleheaders. So it remains the same. The Rays lead by two. Two and one to Reggie Willits. Rodriguez gets back. Boy, that is really close. When that pitcher, when you're a pitcher, left-handed pitcher, your foot crosses the pitching rubber, you're supposed to go home. It's tough. Two balls, two strikes to Reggie Willits. Most of the great left-hander moves are borderline box, aren't they? Andy Pettit, always in question. The great Hall of Famer Steve Carlton had a great move. He was going for a number of box, always on the edge of a box and not one. One ball, two strikes. Oh, yeah. 
Will it stays alive? Just got a piece of that one. Two balls, two strikes to Reggie. Well, it struck out looking his last time up. Three and two. The National League East today, the Phillies beat the Brewers seven to three. The Mets split a doubleheader with Atlanta, so the Phillies picked up half a game. Braves won the first game three to two. Mets shut the Braves out in the second game five nothing. Reggie softly hits a liner into right field for a base hit. Sean Rodriguez first to third. For the 98th time this year, the Angels go first to third on a single. And Willard snaps his 0 for 12. We talked about the reasons why the Angels have won 90 games already this year, have the best record in baseball for Mike Sosh with the pitching staff, the ability to win those close games, but it's also that ability to be aggressive on the base pass going like you mentioned Roy first to third 98 times more than any other club in baseball taking that extra base being aggressive allows them to score those runs when other clubs aren't able to do so first and third two out Mark Teixeira at the plate and Tex takes that one down low he walked his first time up Grounded out in the fourth inning. Willits dives back in there. Rodriguez at third base. Willits at first. Two outs in the fifth. Teixeira takes the breaking ball low. 2 and 0 to Mark Teixeira. If he keeps the inning going, Torrey Hunter would be next. Three and 0. Torrey on deck is two for two with two shots into the outfield. If Fearbin walks Teixeira, he'll face Torrey with the bases loaded. But Teixeira with all that power too. If he gets a good fastball and he wants to swing it, he'll be hacking here. Ball four, bases loaded. And Torrey Hunter coming up. Jim Riggleman in the middle or in the uh, end there. Mel Stoudemire Sr., pitching coach for the M's, who had such success with the pitching staff with the New York Yankees. Stoudemire to Riggleman's right. And Lee Ely on the bench as Randy Messenger starts to warm up for the Mariners. Bases loaded, two outs. Torrey Hunter has a single and a double. Ten grand slams in his career. And he grounds it to Beltre, who steps on third, and the Angels leave him loaded in the fifth. It's still just a 3-2 to two Angel lead. Sixth inning, Jose Lopez leads off for the Mariners and takes strike one from Garland. That's hard hit. Diving backhand pickup, Quinlan gets in. How about the play by Rob Quinlan leading off the sixth inning? What reaction by Q at third base. He's made some great plays the last few games. Full extension, dives, makes a strong throw across the diamond to get Lopez. Well, this defense of the Angels has been very good. The focus is there. That's the one thing Mike Soshik was concerned about when you clinch the division as early as they did. Will they lose focus? They have not done that. The defense has been great. Betancourt at the plate. He is one for two. He's singled to drive in a run in the first inning. I really don't think the Angels have lost any focus at all, Goody. No. Popped up. Garland might handle this one himself. That's the best play ever you can get for a pitcher, Rory. <laughs> you jam a batter 
and it comes right back to you. It's, it doesn't get any better than that. It's better than a strikeout. And John Garland almost is going to smile there at that one. Ball's not carrying up the middle. <laughs> Two outs now. Tug Hewlett at the plate for the Mariners. Hewlett walked last time up. When you think about John Garland tonight, defensively, un unassisted ground ball, cover first, gets the pop up, and also be able to behind home plate to During make that rundown. play in the rundown. Doesn't happen too often, all those plays for one pitcher. Darren Oliver warming up behind Garland. Garland's up over 90 pitches now. He's one and two to Hewlett. Angels three, Mariners two in the sixth. Into right field, and that'll drop in there for a hit. So the DH Tug Hewlett gets his seventh hit as a Mariner. For Seattle. That's their fifth hit of the night. With two outs, Rob Johnson at the plate. Johnson 0 for 2 tonight. And 0 for 10 as a Mariner this year. The catcher of the year in the PCL at Tacoma. 0-1 to him. Two out, one on in the sixth inning. Garland back over to first base again. The American League Central tonight, the Twins look like they might be on their way to sweeping two from Baltimore. That one's foul. They beat the Orioles 12 to 2 in the first game. They lead the Orioles 11 to 6 in the second game in the sixth inning. And the White Sox got rained out again today. So the Sox are getting games piled up on them while the Twins are winning. And if they do go on to sweep, they'll tie that division. It's going to be tough. Double headers are the manager's nightmare, although you can expand the rosters here in the month of September. It's still very difficult to ever sweep a double header. Most times it's going to be a split, like you saw there with the Yankees and Tampa and the Red Sox and Toronto. Blocked by Napoli. One ball, two strikes to Rob Johnson. Two out, one on. And that's into right field for a base hit. Hewlett stops at second base. And that's the first hit for Johnson. The Mariners have two men on with two outs. So it looked like Garland was a cinch to get through the sixth inning, but now he's in another little jam here. Luis Valbuena, the ninth hitter in the batting order, coming up now. Garland has thrown 98 pitches, but Rob Johnson gets his first career base hit. Valbuena has gone one for 13 as a Mariner this year.
He's 0 for 2 tonight. There's a shot hit to second. Rodriguez knocks it down and throws him out. The Mariners lead two more men on base. They've left five in the last three innings. And Rivera, who's having a huge night. He's driven in three runs with a home run and a double. Leads off the sixth inning. In a one-run ball game, Rivera's driven in all three runs for the Angels. Good pitch there by Fearbin. And it's one and one. <laughs> Foul straight back. How about the Lexus pursuing perfection? Would you like to handle that? Oh, I'd love to after this shot. By Juan Rivera it goes dead central for a two run shot, then a rocket for a double to central again. Drives the Tory Hunter both times. That is Lexus pursuing perfection by Juan Rivera. <laughs> There's another shot. That's not to central, though. That's out in left field, and it drops in. Rivera on to second base, and he has another hit, another double for Juan Rivera. He is still pursuing that perfection. Three for three. Two doubles and a home run. That's eight bases, total bases already for Juan Rivera. One out, or nobody out rather, and one on, and Rob Quinlan up there now. Quinlan has struck out and fly to right tonight. But here comes Riggleman. And that's going to be it for Ryan Fearbin. Randy Messenger coming in. It's still just a one-run game, three to two Angels. Back here at the Big A, three to two Angels, bottom of the sixth inning. Randy Messenger is the new pitcher for Seattle. And that would be our in and out burger, who's in, who's out feature here, Gooby. Randy Messenger's got a good fastball, 90 to 94. He's got a curveball and a slider. So he's in then. He is in the game. Seventh game, as a matter of fact. He's been in this year. 4.26 ERA. Putting then maybe up there to bunt. Not that time. It's in there for a strike. Rivera, the runner at second base. Nobody out. In the bottom of the sixth inning. And that's strike two to Q. Rob Quinlan thought that pitch was a little low, but Mike Sosha trusting Rob Quinlan will get the job done by at least hitting the ball to that right side to advance Juan Rivera to third. No, oh, instead he gets hit by the pitch. Randy Messenger hits Q with an 0-2 pitch. Putting runners at first and second with nobody out. That's why so many times I've said this, and when you're 0-2 pitch, you're taught from the little league level on up, throw that 0-2 pitch up and in. But so many things can go wrong when you throw inside, and not being one of them, hitting the batter. Batter most times is protect mode, shorten it up. You can fight that ball inside off a lot easier than if you throw it off the outside corner. Mike Napoli up there. Napoli 0 for 2. Reached on an error and grounded out today. There's a drive into left field by Napoli. That sends Ibanez back just short of the warning track to make the catch. The runners have to hold. He didn't quite get that one the way he got the one last night. Boy, he just missed it. Got underneath it just enough. Be able to make that play for Abani's out left, but that was a pitch he likes, too. That fastball down. 
pretty good swing, but just got underneath it. With one out, Brandon Wood at the plate. 0 for 2 tonight. And he hits one down the right field line, which is going to slice away foul. 0 and 1 to Brandon Wood. Great crowd out here at the Big A tonight. No balls, two strikes. Messenger in relief of Ryan Fearbin. It's three to two Angels, so the Angels trying to get some more runs and get a little breathing room in this one. And there's a base hit to left for Brandon Wood. Rivera being waved in. Ibanez's arm isn't bad, but the throws up the line. And the Angels go ahead four to two. Quinlan goes first to third. Rivera scores. Dino Ebo did not hesitate. And it's four to two. And I like that too out of Dino Ebo being aggressive. Juan Rivera got a good secondary lead. Good job by Brandon Wood to be able to get that fastball up. He's already at third base when Ibanez is fielding that baseball. Take that shot. Good play. Good slide by Juan Rivera scoring on that one. And Johnson wanted the fastball up. Messenger did get the pitch exactly where he wanted, but Brandon Wood with quick hands. It's that ball in the left field. And this 10th RBI of the season. Sean Rodriguez squeeze play. The bunt is fouled back. They've been working with Sean a lot on bunting the baseball. And if he could have gotten that one down, he would have had an RBI. Quinlan looking in at the dugout or looking over his shoulder to try and see Dino before he goes back to the bag. Everything's got to be perfect for a suicide squeeze. The runner going at the right time and the batter be able to get the ball down. Wood back to first base. Rodriguez with a fly ball to shallow center. It doesn't look deep enough to score Q. The catch by Reed and Quinlan holds up. Two outs. Well, those are the types of plays that Sean Rodriguez would figure to be involved in if he's on the playoff roster. Yeah, you got to get that bunt down in a squeeze situation and. Also, when that is unsuccessful, got to get that runner across, get him to score. Dino you know, Evil didn't send Rob Quinlan there because he got Sean Figgins at the top of the order coming up. The confidence in Figgins to be able to get the job done himself. He also didn't send him because he would have been out by about 30 feet. That factor's in there, too. <laughs> well, that would be a deterrent. <laughs> There's a strike into Figgins. Sean's 0 for 3 tonight. Well, the Minnesota Twins playing Baltimore in a doubleheader tonight. Minnesota scored 12 in the first game, and they have 12 again in the second game. And it's only the seventh inning in that one. Not a good night for the old Oriole pitching staff tonight. I mean, anytime you put up, give up 24 runs, you're not feeling real comfortable with your staff. One and one to Sean Figgins. Sean backs out of there. He's hitting 276.
There goes Wood, and they do not throw through. Brandon Wood steals second base. That was a design play, too, by the M's in the case of a stolen base attempt. And Brandon Wood got a pretty good jump. And as I was thinking the line, if that throw goes through to second base, that Rob Quinlan would try to come home, too. But Rob Johnson gave that sign before the pitch was made. Two and two now to Figgy. Runners at second and third with two outs. A base hit here would break the game open for the Angels with Quinlan at third and Wood at second. Chopped foul, still two balls, two strikes. Good pitching matchup tomorrow with Irvin Santana and Felix Hernandez to wrap up this four-game series. Then the Angels are on the road to take on all three teams in the AL West, Oakland, Texas, and Seattle again. Two balls, two strikes. Full count now, three and two. Reggie Willits would be next. Figgins grounds that one up the middle, backhanded by Valbuena, and it's just in time at first base. So the Angels leave two more in scoring position. They did cash in one in the inning, and after six, the Angels lead it four to two. Well, win a nice play, strong throw, gets the first. Top of the seventh, top of the order for the Mariners. Each hero facing the new Angel pitcher, Darren Oliver. Great numbers, 49 games, 5-1 record. ERA under three at 2.97. 11 holds. Popped up, shallow right center. Rodriguez goes back and makes the catch. Darren making that nice adjustment in his mechanics at the early part of last year has been very valuable for Mike Sosha. Out of that bullpen, a good, strong lefty, which are important in the postseason. <laughs> Jeremy Reed up there now. Nope, he's going to be pinch hit for. This will be uh, Vladimir Ballantine batting for Reed. Ballantine hitting 205, seven home runs. Strike call to him. 4-2 Angels. The Angels have out hit the Mariners 8-6 to tonight. Both teams have had their chances, though, and left a lot of men on base. 1-1-2 one one Ballantine. The Mariners, in fact, have left two on in three separate innings, seven total. One and two. Two balls, two strikes to Ballantine. Darren Oliver, after John Garland went six innings. Garland struggled through the first, gave up a couple of runs. And even though he had some uh, tough times in the subsequent innings, he didn't give up any runs. Frankie Rodriguez may get a chance tonight to break that record. Most fans would like to see it. Be amazing to see that too. All time major league record for Frankie. The way the score is right now, it would be a save situation. As long as the Angels are ahead by three or less. 
looks like Frankie's either thinking about it or trying to get it out of his head. It's this amazing to watch the preparation of a closer. I've been fortunate to be around some pretty good ones in my career and Balancing hits one that is foul to Shara might have a play. He does. He had to come back to get it, but Tech stayed with it for the second out. Around Dan Quisenberry, the late Dan Quisenberry, Jeff Montgomery, and Troy Percival over here. Just the different techniques of getting ready. Frankie's getting ready to grab a bat. He might be called upon to hit. <laughs> I'm sure that'd be a first one for him amongst his saves. Get in there, get a swing, and then run out and get a save. <laughs> Ibanez at the plate for the Mariners. Takes it high and tight. Back to John Garland, though. 12 ground ball outs for John Garland. He fielded position very well. Big play was being behind home plate to be involved in that rundown and saved the run. One and one to Ibanez. Garland at the moment in line for his 14th win of the year. One and two. Ibanez singled and scored back in the first inning. The Mariners have not scored since then. Spun him around there. And the count goes to two and two. That's a pretty good pitch, too. You're ahead of the count one, two, and throwing that fastball up and in. Bind is looking out over the plate, looking for a breaking pitch out of Oliver. Foul at the plate. It's the reason why, as a pitcher, you throw up and in like that. The next pitch, that break of ball, the hitter's not looking out over the plate as eagerly. You saw that barely got the end of the bat on that baseball just to foul it off. But Oliver, nice job of expanding that strike zone by going inside off the plate and then hitting the outside corner. Nice breaking ball is chopped over the mound, and it'll be a base hit for Ibanez. Oliver made a good pitch, but Raul gets the infield single. And that will bring up Adrian Beltre. Representing the potential tying run. Beltre, 0 for 3, or make it 0 for 2 tonight. He did have a sacrifice fly. And he does have a 15 game hitting streak on the line right now. Beltre fouls the first pitch away strike one. Beltre hitting 269. One and one to Adrian Beltre. 77 RBIs. He's a home run threat. He has 25 this year. And it's two and one to Beltre. The Dodgers won again. They beat Colorado five to one. Arizona is leading two to one in the eighth inning at home against Cincinnati. Two one pitch inside ball three. Well, this is spot now for your Oliver is three one count. Beltre with a lot of power. You just don't want to groove a fastball. You got to hit the corners with this fastball right here. It's a fastball count. You can throw something off speed for a strike. It's not a bad time to do it. He got it in there. Beltre fouled it away. 
Full count three and two. Ibanez will be running on the pitch. Full count to Adrian Beltre. that Beltre no doubt felt was high and outside. And Adrian is letting Marty Foster know that. Beltre's out, so are the Mariners, and we have reached the seventh inning stretch. Four to two, Angels. A very nice evening at the ballpark. The Angels so far making the home fans happy. A four to two lead going into the bottom of the seventh. Reggie Willits one for three tonight. He singled in the fifth. Vladimir Ballantine remains in the game in center field for the Mariners. He hit for Reed. The count 0 and 2 to Reggie Willits. And Reggie hits a soft liner into left field for a base hit. Two hits tonight now for Reggie Willits. Fans visit the Chevy display at Angel Stadium this weekend for a chance to win cool Angel stuff and get $10 off your next service at your Southern California Chevy dealer. Mark Teixeira is 0 for 1. He has a couple of walks tonight. And he takes strike one. Willits at first base with nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh. Messenger drives him back. Scott Shields and Jason Bolger warming up in the Angel bullpen. Tex fouls that one back. The Mariner bullpen busy also as Mark Lowe gets ready. No balls, two strikes to Mark Teixeira. Tex hitting 349 as an angel. Well, it's back in there again. There goes Reggie, the Mariners pitch out, and they get him. The Mariners guessed right that time. Pretty good job by Seattle of executing that for Jim Ringelman. Pitch out, pretty decent jump though, but a slide step and a high pitch out too, which is what you want to do if you're a pitcher. You want to get that ball up with the catcher, a better chance to be able to catch and throw, and that's what he's able to do and get Reggie Wilts. At second base. Tex fouls it away. Still two balls, two strikes. With one out in the seventh inning now, and nobody on. Still two and two. Teixeira with a chance for some postseason glory this year, something he has not been accustomed to in his career. Three and two. 
Well, if you're going to pick one guy, the Angels really need to have a great postseason to be able to advance. It would be Teixeira. On one hop down to Lopez, he'll take it himself. Two outs. So you, you already have Vladimir Guerrero, the guy that has experience there, and you Tory Hunter has had a lot of success in the postseason. But your number three hitter, so important, so you got balance. Three, four, five. With Sean Figgins leading off, getting on base. To share his ability to drive in runs. Drives in over 100 runs every year. His next home run will give him 30 for the fifth consecutive year, so he gives power for Mike Sosha, which is in the playoffs is important. It's so hard to get three or four hits in the inning to score like the Angels have had to rely on in the past. Now you got power in your three, four, five spots. Hunter hits a fly ball to center field. Ballantine makes the catch, and the Angels are out in the seventh. We're through seven, four, two, Angels. Now our Jack of the Box game recap. It's all about Juan Rivera tonight. He's driven in three of the Angels' four runs. That was a two-run home run his first time up. Here's an RBI double that one hops the wall in center field his second time up. And Rivera, a third hit, another double into the left field corner. First time with three extra base hits in the last three years for Juan Rivera. Big game for Rivera. He's definitely paced the Angels to this 4-2 to two lead. His three at-bats hit the ball hard three times. Scott Shields in the game, 57 games, 6 and 4 record. Grady ERA at 2 7 2, 28 holes for Scotty Shields. Ball one to Lopez. 0 for 2 tonight. And there's a liner into right center field for Jose Lopez. That's a base hit. Fans, the Angels have a special ticket offer to show thanks for the support this season during the September 26th through the 28th series with the Rangers. Tickets are available starting as low as $3 or up to 80% off in select seating areas when you use the password thanks at angelsbaseball.com or the Angel Stadium ticket window. For more info on this special ticket offer, visit angelsbaseball.com slash ticket specials. A leadoff single for the Mariners here in the eighth inning. And Frankie Rodriguez, if he gets in, he'll be seeking his record breaking 58th save. But first, Shields has to get through this inning. And Betancourt hits one foul. Unieski Betancourt, one for three tonight. The Mariners have eight hits, but they've also left eight men on base. Into center field. Torrey Hunter is right there. Betancourt's out. Frankie Rodriguez stretching out now. Well, he goes through a lot just to get ready to come into the game, doesn't he? Definitely a perfect opportunity for Frankie. He's getting ready. He can lose. Over a band down there to be able to stretch the arm out. Also an opportunity to get the mind ready. Closers. That mindset going. Tug Hewlett at the plate. Takes ball one. He had a base hit last time up. One for two. He's also had a walk tonight. One out, one on here in the Mariners' eighth inning. Trailing the Angels four to two. Seattle has not scored since the first inning. And that looks like a double play ball. Rodriguez to Wood. Wood to Teixeira. And we head to the bottom of the eighth. If the Angels score one or less, Frankie will have a save opportunity. Now the Southern California Ford dealers game summary. Four to two Angels. The Mariners were ahead 2-0 after one inning. They haven't scored since. Juan Rivera had that big night offensively. And it could be the record-breaking night for Francisco Rodriguez. 
The Mariners, R.A. Dickey takes over. Right-hander who is four and eight. He's a knuckleballer and a 5.25 ERA. Frankie Rodriguez all stretched out, ready to warm up now. Again, if it's a three-run lead or less, it's a save situation. And Francisco Rodriguez right now seeing a 4-2 to two Angel lead. If the Angels score nothing or only one, he'll come in and look for that record-breaking save. And he has a sellout crowd here to do it. Juan Rivera hits another ball hard to deep left field over the head of Ibanez. Rivera heading for second base with his fourth extra base hit of the night. And I'm hoping he didn't pull up lame there. Looked like when he rounded first base, something was wrong there with his leg. That's his fourth extra base hit, but now some concern for him. Dino Ebel comes out. Athletic trainer Adam Nevola and Mike Sosha all going out there. And Rivera, after he hit it, He's running, he's okay so far. Okay, okay, around first base. And then he kind of grabbed at the groin area and he's coming out of the game. Juan Rivera, four for four, three doubles and a home run, but he has to leave here in the eighth inning. So Juan's getting a hand, it's his first career effort ever to get four extra base hits. So hopefully Juan is okay because obviously that bat has come to life in a big way tonight. Gary Matthews will go in and run for him. Matthews trying to loosen up a little bit on the run to second base. The batter will be Rob Quinlan. Quinlan 0 for 2. He's been hit by a pitch tonight. Dickey from the stretch delivers to Q and the knuckleball is fouled away. It's scoreboard watching in a way for Frankie Rodriguez. You can't help but peek and there's Rivera walking it off. But Frankie as he warms up he knows very well if the Angels score a couple of runs. The chance for a save goes out the window. There's the pitch down low, unless, of course, the Mariners started to rally in the ninth inning. Frankie getting set, Orlando Mercado watching him. One ball, one strike to Quinlan. Knuckleball low and outside. R.A. Dickey's been a starter and a reliever this year for the Mariners. This is the painful time of year for a team like Seattle, especially a team that did have aspirations for a good year. Tonight, if they lose, it would be their 90th loss. Nobody thought they'd lose that many games. And, of course, they have a shot at losing 100 now. Jim Riggleman has gone through the second half of the season with Seattle. Three and one to Quinlan. And he went to a fastball. Rob hits it into center field. That's pretty well hit. It drives Ballantine all the way back to the warning track to make the catch. Matthews to third. One out. Mike Napoli coming up. Now if the Angels score one run, it is still a save situation. 43,757 here tonight, and most of them are still here, knowing they might see history tonight. That record of Bobby Thigpen's has been standing since 1990. Napoli's going to be intentionally walked here. Bolger is the other reliever. They're trying to set up a potential double play ball here. The Mariners are 
still trying to win the game. They're not really interested in being any part of Francisco Rodriguez's history. And Brandon Wood will bat now with runners at first and third and one out. There's the walk to Napoli. And Riggleman going to the mound. Not necessarily to make a change. But calling his infielders in around him. So the Mariners 57 and 89 but obviously still trying to win a ball game here and they'll keep playing hard and doing the best they can all the way down the stretch. The Angels visit Seattle. It's the next to last series of the regular season. The Angels will be in Seattle the 22nd through the 25th. Then the Angels will come home and play the final three games of the regular season against Texas. Brandon Wood up there. Woody's one for three. The infield playing halfway for the Mariners. Knuckleball outside. It would be interesting to know how many knuckleballers Brandon Wood has ever faced. You don't find too many minor league knuckleball pitches. Throw to first, Napoli back in there. But it's a pitch, if you can master it, obviously you can pitch well into your 40s. R.A. Dickey's hoping that's the case. He's 33 years old. And there's a strike on the knuckleball. One ball, one strike to Brandon Wood. Fly ball center field. Valentine has to go back. It's playable, however, and he makes the catch. It's an easy tag and score for Gary Matthews, and it's five to two Angels. Second RBI of the night for Brandon Wood. Now, if you're among the 43,000 plus here tonight, obviously you don't want the Angels to score again. I mean, they'll cheer if they do, but you have a chance to see history tonight. Sean Rodriguez, the batter. Rodriguez tonight had a single in the fifth inning. He's one for three. Napoli at first with two outs. The Angels in the last few days, if you were with us right at the top of the show, you saw the clinching of the American League West. Frankie Rodriguez tying the record. A walk-off game-winning home run by Napoli last night. And the question, what will happen tonight? Well, it could be the night that Frankie Rodriguez sets the all-time single-season saves mark. But we'll see. The Mariners in the bottom of the ninth have the eight, nine, and one batters due up. Pop fly shallow left center field and it's going to be caught by Valentin. The Angels score one run and the crowd knows what's next. They're standing at the big A. Francisco Rodriguez coming in from the bullpen looking for the 58th save of the season. Nobody's ever done it. Angels five Mariners two and here comes Frankie.
that ties the all-time Major League record. The wait could be over tonight. Frankie Rodriguez takes over in the ninth inning looking for number 58. It would be great. It would be the greatest a closer has ever done in one season. Bobby Thigpen set the record in 1990. Frankie has tied it. And tonight he can break it. He has a three run lead. He's going to face a pinch hitter here. Leading off the ninth inning Miguel Cairo. Gooby is down on the field or near the field can you hear us Gooby? yeah Rory it's a lot of fun down here I'll tell you the atmosphere and the anticipation is is deafening down here right now I'm enjoying it Francisco Rodriguez facing Miguel Cairo strike one Cairo hitting 245 one for three in his career the other two times he has struck out against Francisco Rodriguez well, this is the best situation he could have a three run cushion. Strike two on a check swing. Yeah, Roy, the big thing is having that little bit of a leeway because you know the adrenaline's rushing so quickly for him right now. The big thing for him is to stay back just a little bit, trust those mechanics. You're seeing the flash bulbs pop as Frankie delivers the baseball. A hard hit ball down the third baseline headed to the corner. Cairo turns and gets into second base with a lead off double. A pinch hit double off of Frankie Rodriguez leading off the ninth. Just out of the reach of Rob Quinlan who had made a play similar to, similar to that diving to the backhand side earlier tonight. Yeah, Quinlan's been making some great plays, but that ball was hit so hard by him, there's no way you're going to be able to catch that ball. So Cairo, professional hitter, even behind an account, had a good swing. Now Luis Valbuena at the plate. We should tell you Gary Matthews stayed in the game in right field, replacing Rivera. And there's ball one to Valbuena. Five to two Angels, top of the ninth inning. If you're just joining us, Francisco Rodriguez gunning for save number 58. When you think of the great closers the game has seen, one of them inducted into the Hall of Fame this year, Goose Gossage. You realize what a year it's been for Frankie Rodriguez. Yeah, you think about it, you got you mentioned Goose, Bruce Souter, Raleigh Fingers, all the great ones in the past. No one came close to this type of record that Frankie, if he gets his save, is gonna have right now at 58. He's behind on Balbuena, three and oh. Ronnie Foster, this whole game has been more of a high fastball, high pitch. Umpire, he's going to call that for strike. The pitch around the knees. He's not been given all day, and that's what that was. And he walked him on four pitches. All of a sudden, the Mariners bring the tying run to the plate. Ichiro. Two hits today for Ichiro. Yeah, it's a tough batter right here. This is a guy that's got pop, but also a guy that puts the ball in play. So you got. The stress of not only have some base runners on there first and second, but one of the best hitters the game has ever seen in Ichiro up now. Frankie has six blown saves this year, and as you can see, Ichiro's not fared very well against him. When Thigpen set his record, he had eight blown saves that year. Frankie with six right now. Even though Ichiro's only two for 23. He's only struck out five times against K Rod, so he has put it in play. And there's strike one on that devastating curveball. That's got the 12 6 action, Gooby. That's really not a slider. No, it's not. It's, he throws that hard curve. Some people call it a slider, but the balance was the key for him over that pitching rubber. He threw him another one. Each arrow fouls it off. And the count is 0 and 2. 
Another very good off-speed pitch. Ichiro loves the fastball, but he's one of those guys too who will put the ball in play even as he's going down that first baseline. Very difficult to strike out. 0 and 2 to the Mariners' leadoff hitter. And he missed with that one. One ball, two strikes. I can remember how confident Frankie Rodriguez was when he came up in 2002. He sure fouls another one away and was chatting with him about the fact that he had been in the minor leagues. He'd been in double A, triple A, came up to the big leagues that year. And he just was blowing everybody away. And I said, well, is there any difference? He said, no, not at all. Double A, triple A, big leagues, it's all the same. He certainly pitched like it. I mean, where would they have been without him? He was having that kind of success. Here's the one two. And each hero fouls another one away. They tell us that Juan Rivera has a strained right hip flexor. That's why he came out after that double, which made him four for four on the ninth. Each hero, as he always does, battling the pitcher. A high chopper towards second base. Rodriguez flips the wood. So they get one out there. Pretty good play by Sean Rodriguez, who didn't really have time to take it out of his glove. That ball was right back up the middle. And that was the only play, the only chance for an out. Well, that was an amazing play. I mean, at this level down here, you can see how good of a job it was for Sean Rodriguez. Bill like catch that in the glove all at the same time and make that flip over to Brandon Wood. Especially when you got a base runner bearing down on Brandon Wood like he was. So that was a great play. Great athletic skill but Sean Rodriguez who's made some unbelievable plays at second base for the Angels. Frankie needs two more outs. There are runners at first and third. Valentin at the plate for Seattle. And Napoli. I think he wasn't quite sure what pitch was coming so he's going out to talk to Rodriguez. I think he's just saying right there, Rory, just give me a fastball here. Let's get a ground ball double play. Let's get that save record right now. One pitch. Cairo at third, each hero at first. Frankie Rodriguez went through a streak this year where he converted 25 straight saves. And they're not going to get a double play as each hero takes second base. 1 0 to Ballantin. And Angel Killer Raul Ibanez is on deck. And there's a strike. One ball, one strike to Ballantine. Strike two. Frankie Rodriguez in tandem with Scott Shields. They're close to another record, although it's much less recognized. They have pitched in the same game now 242 times in their careers. Shields was in in the eighth inning. The second highest behind Dennis Eckersley and Rick Honeycutt. But they're only six short of those guys. He might have overthrown that one a little. Napoli kept it in front. And the count two and two to Ballantine. Yeah, you really get a good idea of, of the mechanics right here by Frankie at this level because you can see him using that entire body you know, to force the action, use that change up a curveball. Fastball too. He's getting that drive off that pitching rubber. He just wants it so bad. He's at times jumping ahead a little bit quicker than norm. Two balls, two strikes. Ballantine waiting. Frankie's pitch struck him out. He threw him the change up to get him. Two outs in the ninth inning.
The standing ovation has already begun. Raul Ibanez comes to the plate. He has two hits tonight. One more out, and Frankie Rodriguez becomes the all-time single-season save leader, and that's strike one on a changeup to Ibanez. What an atmosphere down here, Rory. I'll tell you what. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. They get a chance to witness Major League history here, the all-time record. You can feel it. One and one. The crowd wants number 58, and you know Frankie Rodriguez wants it also. Everybody's standing, so many people taking pictures. When Bobby Thigpen set the record, there was no such thing as taking a picture with your cell phone. But there are a lot of them being held up right now. One ball, one strike to Ibanez. Down and in, ball two. Two balls into strike. If Ibanez keeps it alive, Beltre would be next. Frankie doesn't want it to get that far. Two and one to Raul Ibanez. Frankie Rodriguez, still only 26 years old. From Caracas, Venezuela, he's one strike away from setting an all-time major league record. His previous high was 47 in a season. And he led the league in 2006. Two and two, two out, two on. Ball three. His specialty has not been just breezing through a one, two, three inning this year. So somehow this is appropriate. Two on, two out. Three balls and two strikes to Raul Ibanez. And Frankie Rodriguez delivers. He struck him out swinging. Save number 58 for Francisco Rodriguez. Nobody has ever done it until right now. Here come the guys from the bullpen who sit out there with him every day. Roy, I'll tell you what, you get goosebumps being down here on the field right now. This, you're witnessing history right now. Unbelievable. And the way he finished it off with the strikeout and all the fellas being around there, it's, it's unbelievable down here. K-Rod struck out the last two. A couple of K's in the scorebook. A 3-2 breaking ball he threw to Ibanez and Francisco Rodriguez has set the all-time Major League record for saves in a season, and what a season it continues to be for the Angels. And you would think after you clinch your division, we're already being kind of this kind of cruising through, but each and every day has been magical. You ties it with 57, walk-off piece last night by Napoli, and here it is, Frankie, with all-time history. What a week it's been. And Frankie is heading over to the stands and blowing a kiss. Thank you a little bit, okay? I'm for you guys. I love you. It's not quite a victory lap, but it's close. Tim Mead puts his arm around Frankie, and now the business of talking about the record begins. Eventually, he'll get over to 
Mark Gubazar. Justin Mosley giving his congratulations. Frankie's heading over to Gooby right now as he waves to the crowd. You have a huge crowd to talk in front of Gooby. The standing ovation continues. He's with Frankie Rodriguez. Oh, Frankie, this the number 58. What does that mean to you? That means a lot, huh? It's, you know, a lot of relief, a lot of, you know, uh, finally I did. And I'm really happy. The, the fans really deserve this moment. And, yo, you win a World Series in 02. You save an All-Star game. Now you break an all-time Major League record. It's got to be nothing better in the world for you. I mean, I mean it's been an amazing year. Uh, it's, you know, it's been a teamwork. All those, those guys out there contribute to me, to, you know, to help me to get those out. And, and I just, you know, got to thank my teammates and thank the fans for the support. Yeah, your guys down in the bullpen, they came all rushing out to you. I saw you with Scott Shields. How important has your bullpen mates been for you to be able to get this record? It's really important because without them, I couldn't have done this. Uh, Shields has been tremendous all year. All the guys, in, uh, Oliver, Spy, all those guys have been tremendous out there, handing me the ball to me in the ninth inning. So I'm really proud of them. And then, you know, I'm really happy right now. Frankie, any adjustments over the wintertime into the season to make this possible to get, say, number 58? Well, well, we'll see what's going to happen. Uh, uh, right now, I got no, you know, I, I have no words right now. Yeah, congratulations, Frankie. Unbelievable job. Rory, back up to you. I'll tell you what, it's an unbelievable atmosphere right here. Frankie saying, giving a lot of love to the fans and unbelievable feeling. He just did a tremendous job. Well, just another halo victory, Gooby, on this Saturday night here at the Big A. Frankie being congratulated by the fans and shaking hands with the fans. It's been quite a week here at the Big A. Yeah, well, yeah Roy, it's not, I mean, it's not your typical, just another halo victory tonight again. It's been that way the last four days. It's been phenomenal when you think about it. You clinch your division. Frankie gets 57. Napoli hits went out a walk-off yesterday, the eighth walk-off win of the year. And then Frankie's able to do it again today in typical Frankie fashion. A little bit of stress, but comes through with that big strikeout. Unbelievable job. Well, the pitch was just a wicked breaking ball to Raul Ibanez. Looked like a change up there on the replay as Ibanez strikes out swinging and Frankie celebrating and in a way looking very relieved, almost exhausted in, in his celebration. Really. Exactly. And, and you mentioned that pitch from this level down here at the field. You really get a good good idea of how tough that pitch is to hit. Change up. You got Raul Ibanez who's hit so well against the Angels throughout his whole career. This dominates in this stadium but you can see how his hips were wide open his bat was trying to stay back in his zone, but is unable to do so it was that good of a pitch by Frankie and I'll tell you what he's so relieved but also he realizes right now he's in his names put it in a place of history I mean 58 career say I mean 58 saves this year an all-time major league record the changeup it was almost unfair when he got that pitch going the fastball was great the breaking pitch was one of the best in baseball then you add in a very very good changeup and it's almost impossible to rally against this guy oh you can I mean even though it looks like you have him on the ropes and then Ichiro a tough batter hits that chopper up the middle but Sean Rodriguez again you look at the defense throughout this ball game they were unbelievable making those plays and this is a team that's clinched the division, yet the focus is there as if this is the second game of the season that's been that good. you got to give a lot of credit to Mike Sosha and also given an opportunity with Scott Shields to bring that ball over to Frankie Rodriguez to give him a safe situation. Without those bullpen mates, Frankie said it best, they are so key for him and, of course, the defense behind them. Well, the Angels win the ball game on Frankie Rodriguez's 58th save. He came in, he knew it was at stake, and as he does just about every time he got the job done and the Angels beat the Mariners five to two the Angels have won four games in a row three in a row over Seattle and they'll meet them again tomorrow afternoon here to wrap up this four game series Angels five Mariners two thanks for watching everybody for Mark Gubaza I'm Rory Marcus good night everybody